Hi everyone, I'm Jill Hobbs with my next video using power text within decorative painting. For this Budley Craft Design Team Challenge, I have used power text products to create a textured roof on this birdhouse. A cute goodie stamp by Kim McFarlane and the full list of product used and instructions can be found on the Budley Craft blog and the link is in the description box. I've played with these amazing products and the ideas it generates is mind-blowing but for this project I have kept it simple. I will finish my design once it's dried after three weeks with easy varnish but for today I'm using the fabric hardener and this Powertex paper deco stuff and it needs this needs to be completely damp but not wet before using the Powertex liquid. Now, when I played with this earlier and I dunked this directly into a pot of water and squeezed out the excess, I ended up with a ball of paper that did not want to flatten out, which would be okay for other projects but not what I wanted for this one. The first time I tried this, I had absolutely no idea of what it would look like dry. I like the transparency of just one layer of this paper. The texture is awesome. Okay, let's get started. Protect the main part of the birdhouse and the string hanger with cling film and masking tape. tiny bit of string here left which will be sealed with Powertex fabric in a minute, Powertex hardened fabric and that's just to get rid of this hole at the top of the birdhouse. Cut strips of Powertex paper approximately three centimetres wide and then pull it apart into easily managed lengths. If too long they will fold and stick together. Gauge how much you think you need. A little bit too much is better than not enough. into clean water and place on an old tail. Roll it up like a Swiss roll and twist to wring out the water. Latex gloves and a plastic apron are perfect for keeping me clean. Well, 
in theory it is. But I'm still wearing old clothes just in case. Always follow your instructions on the labels of your bottles. Shake this liquid really well. And pour into a plastic container. This is a clean food tray. Rub some of the liquid onto the wood. Then I rub the liquid into the paper thoroughly. It can be dunked into the liquid, but you need to squeeze out the excess. And I was back to square one with another ball of paper. Now, once the paper fabric hardener goes on it, it completely changes shape. Now you can understand if you've got a piece that's got a quite long, how it all sort of sticks together. Let's see if I can do this back to front. I'm just going to lay this on right on the bottom edge. Not too much, but you do need to make sure it's into the into the paper thoroughly. Oops. No, that piece wants to come off, so that's fine.
string give it a little squeeze don't worry about it too much because you've got a little bit of playing time whilst this dries so you can give it a squeeze and once it's set hard you can't do anything about it but before then you've got a little bit of playing time so I've got a little bit of power text left in my thing now I could put that in a paper bag and throw it in the bin it is environmentally friendly but I'm a real meanie and to me this is waste and a pot of this power tech stuff isn't exactly cheap I'm going to put a foil on the top and then pop this into a airtight um, large polythene bag and then I can use this again and when I do use it I just give it a really good stir with my finger and then it'll go again and because this is plastic anyway it won't stick no, better take these glyphs off. I'm a little bit sticky. And these can go in the bin. Clean up your work area. Wash your hands and any tools you wish to keep with warm soapy water. And I also wash my glasses just in case of splashes. Any leftover um, paper deco stuff will dry out and you can use it again. Leave the birdhouse to air dry or it can be dried near a radiator or speed dried with a hair dryer. And I have tried it with a hair dryer on other projects. It not only dries quicker but it also warms it up so be very careful. This will be ready to paint when it is touched dry. But in true Blue Peter style, I'll paint on something I've prepared earlier. Right ladies, please take note. Brand new apron. I'm beginning to look a little bit posh. But I can't guarantee how long it's going to stay this clean mind. Painting the roof. I'm using a three quarter wash brush. And honey brown, which will be slightly watery. Paint the textured roof, pushing the paint into the texture. And paint it sort of upside down so that the, the actual paint We'll run onto your, onto the actual, um, <laughs> lost my word, body of your birdhouse. second coat because once this is dry you'll find little white areas that you you can't see when the paint's wet right, I think that'll do for now I'll give it a good dry and then check it again now this is completely dry and I can see a few spots of white it would be tempting to say that that is okay but just remember this dark colour is the depth of the texture you have created and it needs to be a dark colour. Repaint where needed. Add all purpose sealer to a bit of honey brown approximately one to one. Mix thoroughly and paint the band and under the roof and dry.
once this is dried just check it for colour and if you want to put another coat on the stencil brush and primary yellow dry brush over the honey brown the application is quite heavy and the darker color will show through and then dry primary yellow as you can. Once you've uh, removed as much paint as you can and there's quite a bit of yellow still showing on the sides but I'm not too worried about that we can give it a really good wash with soapy water later on. So we're going to dry brush with pineapple and this is a lot lighter touch. Dry brush in every single direction until you gradually build up that highlight right on the very edge of the texture. this well I'll dry this after I finish the whole thing with a three-quarter wash brush base coat the house with baby blue and multi-purpose sealer mix it one to one and mix thoroughly on the opposite side to the opening and perch and work from side to side to stop a definite stop start line from forming. Then dry and apply another coat of paint if needed and dry again. There's a few dents in this in this birdhouse and I'm not going to worry about it too much. It will just add that extra little bit of rustic feel which we've already created with the roof.
Easy, easy. We are two colours meet. So just get a damp brush. Wet the paint. And just wipe it off. If it doesn't wipe off, the good old painter's workhorse, the cotton bud. will help. And if that doesn't work, if you've still got some honey brown left over, you can do a little bit of touching up. But the trouble is with touching up with honey brown, you might end up with honey brown on the blue. So because this is up underneath, I'm not going to worry about this too much. The digi stamp has been cropped and resized. And you need to trace two birds together twice and each bird separately. Attach the single birds either side of the opening with magic tape. And then line up the other two evenly between them. Their tails nearly meet and they are approximately one centimetre off from the bottom of the bird house. When you're happy with the placement, transfer the tail, legs, bows and outline of each bird with dark transfer paper. Transferring onto something round is quite difficult as things roll around. Just take a tail and roll, it, roll in both sides. Flip it over. And you've got something that's fairly firm. Right. Just split it up. Yeah. And you've got something a whole lot firmer. Slip the dark transfer underneath. transferring okay turn and continue all the way around pop your tracings back to one side we'll be using these again in a minute I'm gonna actually demo the painting on card which I've previously base coated with baby blue. I'm a right handed painter. You will not see what I'm doing if I paint like this. And painting on a round object is not easy when I'm trying to do it at a different angle. It's just, it's just not my natural way of painting. Base coat all of their bodies with an angle or a flat brush and moon yellow. Work the paint out to the edges and dry and repeat to an opaque finish. coat is always uneven. That's just fine because that's just the way it should be. Just repeat the layers until you've got a, a nice solid all over colour. I've done three coats of paint and though it's not perfect it's going to be okay. Realign your tracing and transfer the wings, eyes, beaks and just that little bit of overlap between Mr and Mrs.
Right, I transferred that a little bit heavily and I've not actually aligned this bit's PC here properly. So I'm just going to rub that out if I can find my rubber. not perfect. I think I may have come over my line a little bit here but I'll worry about that in a minute. Now these lines are a little bit dark. I'm just going to put them out slightly. I don't want to remove them. But I do need them a whole lot paler than that. These little birdies will be outlined right at the very end, so in, any mistakes can be rectified then. With a liner brush, base coat his bow tie with ocean blue and her bow with primary red. Dry between coats to an opaque finish. was enough. I'm really happy with that. Float shade on the design. Angle or flat brush with mink tan. Oops. Under the wing feathers. Around the wing. And underneath their tummies. Too much water in my brush. I've lost my, my clean side of my brush, so I'm going to wash my brush out and start again. Maybe a little bit of clean water to start with.
I've just put in a float here under his tummy before this float was dry and I've actually wiped that bit of the float off so give this a quick dry and put that one back in Shade each side of the bow knots. The blue bow with Prussian blue. And the red bow with deep burgundy and dry. Deep burgundy don't seem to be showing on this colour. I'm going to try black plum. Creating folds in the bows. The liner brush, pull out lines in the appropriate colour and dry. With an angle or flat brush, highlight their bodies with a float of pineapple. It's a back-to-back -back float on the wing feathers and dry this before floating the top edge of each wing. You can also add a float on the top of his head and dry. Now that was a silly thing to do because I floated this one before I floated that one. Now if I float this one I might wipe that off so it would have been better if I floated that one first and then that one. So I'm going to have to be very careful. gone a little bit into that shaded area just get rid of it
brush and slightly thinned honey brown. Paint the tails, the legs and outline each element of the design and dry. legs and tails with moon yellow. Oops, missed a bit under your tummy. Oops. Paint a few pairs of flying birds in the sky and dry. These are just two curves of the little body. Now normally we would paint odd numbers, one or three, but in this case two's company and three's a crowd and one, well, he's just not had no luck at all. The beaks are orange. Mix a touch of primary red into primary yellow. Add more red until you're happy with the colour and paint the beaks with a liner brush and dry. With your stylus, add two dots of lump black for the eyes. Dip and dot.
with a cocktail stick highlight his highs with a tiny dot of white at approximately five o'clock and her eyes at approximately two o'clock. With a stencil brush, stipple grass all over the bottom and a stripe that will hide their feet with Hauser Medium Green. Keep it opaque but just put a little bit of a rough edge on the top. with hoser light green allowing some of the darker green to show through and dry and then wash this brush again with soap and water like you did earlier on. brush and thinned white reline the birds in the sky. With your stylus, place random dots of moon yellow in the grass for daisy centres. Wipe your stylus and dry your dots. Dot three or five petals around each yellow dot. Now three dots make for a half daisy that's looking straight up to the sky. Whoops. Two feet. Do the head and two arms. And then dry these. With your stylus, an avocado green, dot heart shaped leaves randomly around the daisies. With your stencil brush and white, 
dry brush a few wispy clouds in the sky. text needs to be left for three weeks to dry it thoroughly before varnishing. Oops. With the easy varnish. I will be using the same varnish for all of this project. I usually varnish in stages for these little bird houses. The roof first and dry and then varnish the bottom. Now you can either hang these up so that the bottom dries or you can pop them into a bowl to dry. Always wash your brush thoroughly with warm soapy water between each application. I usually use this soft brush when I'm varnishing but this product is wax based and I'm a little bit wary about using a brush that I will be using with water based varnish. Now this brush I bought by accident with a long handle so this could be really an ideal choice to use with this varnish and I won't mix them up. It's still lovely and soft. If hanging your birdhouse outside do three coats of varnish air dry thoroughly between each coat. I hope you enjoy creating this project as much as I have. Playing with Powertex is addictive and this is just something new to add to the list we all enjoy. Until next time, happy painting!